Father, thank you so much for your word. We trust that your word is going to make a difference in our life because your word is spirit and it is life. So may we have ears to hear what you're saying. I thank you, Lord, that as we hear that we're not hearers alone, but we go out and do it and that you would fulfill your promise, that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders following. I thank you, Father, that your word is in my mouth and you cover me with the shadow of your hand. I thank you that it's not my human works, but Lord, it's a demonstration of your Holy Spirit at work in this place in the heart of every life. So I pray that I'm not a distraction to anyone in their hearing. And I commit us all unto you, Lord, and I thank you for your faithfulness, that you have kept us low these years and you will continue to keep us from falling until the day of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and all of the believers said, Amen. Amen. Well, we've been in a multi-series journey learning about faith, what it is, why it's necessary, and who it's actually applicable to. Today, we're going to continue on our journey learning about faith. And so I have a message for us in a series I'm calling Faith Works. I wonder if you'll say that with me. Faith Works works. I wonder if you'll say it with a little conviction. Faith Faith works. works. I chose to call it faith works because um, I believe that with every issue that you're facing, whether it is an issue in your marriage, in your health, in your finances, regardless of the issues that you face regarding a dream that you have, a vision of your heart, or just the future, Regardless of the prophetic word that someone pronounced over your life or the promises that you read in scripture, I really do believe that God responds to faith, that faith really is your answer, that faith works. And so I want to hear from you how many of you want to know how to work your faith. Let me see your hand. Yeah, it should be every one of us because by faith, we read how Enoch did not taste death. By faith, Noah built the ark. By faith, Sarah conceived a child named Isaac. By faith, Moses led Israel through the Red Sea on dry ground. By faith, the walls of Jericho came down. Hebrews chapter 11 is the whole of faith, and it gives account of people who exercised their faith, and they saw miracle after miracle and after miracle. Why? Because faith really does work. And so I'm going to ask us again, how many of you want to know how to work your faith? Me, me, me. I want to know how to work my faith. Well, in order to work our faith, we must first understand that faith is a process. Faith is a process. In the same way, well, let me say this. In your note sheet, you'll see that a process is defined as a series of actions or steps merged or combined together for a desired result. So it's not just one thing, but it's a series of things that we combine together for the desired result. In the same way that I cannot make a cake with flour alone, but I must merge in, combine in different ingredients, the sugar, the eggs, the milk, and other things. In the same way that I cannot fix a car with one tool alone, but I need several tools in order to fix the car. In the same way that I cannot build a strong relationship with someone by one conversation alone, but there must be interaction. We've got to do things together. In the same way that you can't graduate from anybody's college alone by by one class alone, you've got to pay for the course. You've got to apply. You have to go. There's a process in everything that you do, and faith is no different. There is a process to working my faith. It's a process that works through a combination of variables. And so those variables that work my faith include my ears, my heart, my mouth, and my hands. My ears, my heart, my mouth, and my hands. My ears, my heart, my mouth, 
in my hands. I wonder, can you do it with me? My ears, my heart, my mouth, my hands. One more time. My ears, my heart, my mouth, my... Listen, I'm not doing head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. This is not a nursery rhyme, folks. This is a life process. How will I work my faith? With my ears, my heart, my mouth, my hands. Come on, my ears, my heart, my mouth, my hands. If I can combine the process, now I'm working my faith. I can't just have my ears. I can't just have my mouth. I can't just have my heart. And it can't just be my hands. It must be a combination of my ears. What? My heart, my mouth, and my hands. If I can make the process, if I can do the process, then I am working my faith. And so today's message is entitled, Faith Comes by Hearing. We wanted to talk about hearing because specifically we want to deal with the ears. Because remember, it's a part of the process. And when you think about your ears, it is the most crucial part of the process to working my faith. Just like I cannot fix a car with a wrench or a simulation of a wrench alone, but I need many tools, so it is with my faith. There is a process in order for me to have strong faith, in order for me to work my faith. And that process includes my ears. When I need a miracle, when I need God's intervention, when I need his presence in a situation, it means I must focus on my hearing. Come on, say, I must focus on my hearing. I must focus on my hearing. And so I want to highlight for us the, pro the point, the priority, and the power of hearing. Just the point the priority, and the power in hearing. Number one, the point of hearing is found in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It reads, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm gonna read it again. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God which means I must hear what God has to say about the situation that I'm facing in order for me to have faith enough to see a change. So every Sunday, we only have one Sunday a, a week to talk about issues. So if I'm standing here and I'm talking about missions and you're dealing with a health challenge, you have to hear messages regarding your health. You have to make a decision that I'm going to hear a message regarding healing because I need to hear in order for me to receive. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'll say it again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we're here talking about health and healing, but you have a money problem, you need to go to the bookstore or pull up the app and listen to it, the ministry based on your finances. If you're having a marital problem, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God, which means I need to go find ministry Focus specifically on marital relationships, on relationships that God has spoken, on how God has determined that we are to love one another in a marriage. Faith comes by hearing. So if I hear what God has said, Romans says, faith what? Comes. If I hear what God has said, then faith comes. It increases. It grows, it rises, it becomes stronger. But if I cannot hear what God said about my situation, if I go on like it doesn't matter, faith will not come and my situation will not change. Because faith, what comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Most of us as Christians 
assume that faith, that because we are Christian or because we work in the church or because we've heard it before, that we'll have faith. But hear me this morning. You had faith enough to get you where you are right now. You've already used that faith. But it doesn't mean that you have enough faith, that you have enough faith, that you have enough faith to deal with the situation that's in front of you. Just because you had faith does not mean that you have enough faith to deal with the dream that God has put in your heart. It does not mean that you have enough faith to deal with the problem that you face. It does not mean that you have enough faith to deal with the promise that you read in the word. Because faith is not static. In other words, it does not stand still. Faith is either coming or faith is leaving. I want you to think about maybe you've ever seen an empty plastic bottle in a body of water, maybe a lake, an ocean. Have you ever seen that? Let me see your hand. I think everybody has seen maybe trash. It's just floating, bobbing around in a body of water. I'm going to use the ocean as an example. Plastic bottle is floating around in the ocean. It's not, it's not staying in the same spot. It may be in the vicinity because you're looking and it doesn't look like it's moving, but it's always moving. It's moving either closer to the shore or it's moving further out into the ocean, but it's always moving. And so it is with your faith. It is always moving. It's either moving closer to what God said or it's moving closer to what the enemy is saying, what the world is saying to all your doubts. But faith is always moving. And so we want to hear a couple of examples of how faith works by hearing. And so I want us to begin at Romans chapter 10. We'll read verse 14. Faith at work from hearing. Paul is talking. He says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then in verse 14, he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not what? Heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Herein is an emphasis on hearing. If I hear the salvation message, then I will believe because faith has come. It's why we're all in this room today. Because we heard enough of the salvation message. We've heard it over and over again so that we responded according to our faith. I've heard it. I received it now by faith. That's how faith works. Now let's see faith at work in people who did not hear. We'll look at Mark chapter 6. Jesus goes to his own hometown. And he gets there and the Bible says he could do no mighty works there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Wow, this is Jesus himself and the scripture says he could not do many works there because of what? And then let's look in the next verse. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief, he couldn't do many works there. Then in response, it says, he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. That's so interesting. They hear Jesus, the son of the living God, who's doing miracles all over the place. He can't do mighty works in this city because of unbelief. He doesn't get offended by it. He just marvels at their unbelief. And in response, he begins to go around teaching. Why? Because when you're being taught, you have an opportunity to hear. Faith comes increases, grows, rises, mounts up when I hear. If I'm not hearing his word, faith regresses, shrinks, declines, decreases. So you can sit in the church Sunday by Sunday with your faith ebbing and flowing, needing miracles, wanting God to do something in your life, but because you're not hearing, faith is decreasing 
for your hearing and your mounting up stronger and stronger so that you too can see a change. All things are possible to those who believe, which means I must set it up for my life to hear his word. I always marvel when I go to a, a person who's in the hospital. I go to them, and they're in the hospital, and they got the TV on. Why am I marveling? Because I'm thinking, you just told me that you're close to death. So I don't know why you're listening to Netflix. That's not the time to look at TV. So I'm telling you this because this can save your life. That's not the time to turn on the TV. When you're in a fight for your life, you need faith to come. That's the time to turn on the word. That's the time to tell your nurse, I'm sorry, I got these, uh, these earbuds in my ear and you cannot take them. I need to hear what God said about my situation. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live according to his word of God. I shall not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. But faith will not come if you don't hear. If you can't hear that, you'll start making arrangements. Your friend will come in and say, tell my family that when I leave, You'll start listening to the wrong voice. But remember, faith is a process. And today we're just talking about hearing. And so when you think about anything that's going on in your life, that's your opportunity to hear what does God say concerning my life so that your faith will rise. That's the whole point of hearing. Hearing, I need to hear because faith comes. What's the point? The point is I hear so that faith will come. Why do I have to listen to it in my car? So that faith will come and I can see a change. Why do I need to push the button and listen to it again? So that my faith will rise and I can be stronger so that I, I can see the change. If we want change, faith must come. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number two, I want to highlight the principles of hearing. The principles of hearing, let's look at John chapter 17. Jesus is praying for his disciples. It's one of the few times we get a chance to hear Jesus' prayer. He's praying for his disciples, and that includes all of us. And he says, Father, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. What is truth? Your word is truth. What is truth? Your word is, what is truth? Your word is truth. Jesus is here praying. He says, sanctify my people that they're like me, they're in the world, but they're not of the world, set them apart from the facts, those situations in life, set them apart from that so that they may remain in truth. Jesus is praying knowing that facts are happening in our lives. He knows that in this world there will be symptoms, there will be events, there will be circumstances and there will be conditions. All of these things are facts that lure us away from the truth. Fill in your note sheet. Facts are man's reality. Facts are man's reality. But truth, truth is God's reality. Two different things. Man's reality and God's reality. How many of you can agree that God's reality is so much greater than man's reality? Yes, God's reality is so much greater. And so Jesus prays for us that we will not succumb to man's reality, that we won't get wrapped up in man's reality, that we won't allow ourselves to yield to man's reality, that we don't give in to what is inferior to God's reality. But we would live in God's truth. Truth is his word. And so when you think about life, you've got events, symptoms, you've got conditions, you've got circumstances all around you. But you can look in your Bible and you have the truth presented to you, which means each of us gets a chance to make a choice. Will I get sucked into the man's reality? 
or will I give myself to God's reality? When I'm set apart by truth, God's reality, then I'm in faith. Then is when I'm in faith. I'm not in faith because I go to church. I'm not in faith because I know how to quote a couple of scriptures. I'm not in faith because I have a great voice. I'm not in, fa in faith because I know how to serve. I'm in faith when I can man maintain God's reality in my life. It doesn't mean that man's reality is not there present looking at me. But here's the difference. When I'm looking at man's reality, I don't succumb to it. I don't let it accommodate me. I don't let it dictate my reality. Yes, I have a bump on my head, but that does not mean that I give in to the bump where I'm always accommodating the bump. No, facts may be there, but the truth is always greater. So facts may say my marriage has failed, it's doomed, it's over, it's very clear. But that's not what the truth says. The truth says love endures all things, love believes all things, love hopes all things. So I maintain the truth of God's word even when I'm looking at a marriage dissolved. Because I don't live by what I see. Those are just facts. And even if the person never says another word to me, I'm not moved by that because I'm living by what God said. So yeah, it may be falling apart. The child may have come in drunk again, but I'm not moved by that. I just take their shoes off and I keep on going because I know I'm living in God's reality that the seed of the righteous is delivered. I'm not moved by whether you go get drunk again and again because I know you are saved. So what? Yeah, I have pain in the leg, but I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm not ignoring the pain. I'm not acting like the pain's not there. Yeah, there's pain, but I am not submitted to the pain there. I am submitted to God's word. Oh, I hope you can hear the difference, that faith deems God's reality as greater than man's reality. Faith deems truth as greater than the fact. So yes, I may be lonely, may be alone. That is a fact. But the truth is, you said you would never leave me nor forsake me and that your rod and your staff, they would comfort me. The, the facts may say, yeah, foreclosure is inevitable. I've been in the red for a minute. It's always red. It looks like it's always red. But listen, the truth is that there is no want to them that fear him. So I live by the truth. I can look at my bank account in the red and declare what God said. I see it's red, but Father, you told me that I shall not lack for any good thing to those who seek you. I seek you, Lord. That's the difference. Surrendering to the man's reality or holding fast to God's reality. Cognitively in our mind, I believe that we can distinguish the difference. And I believe that we can say, yeah, I agree with that. The challenge is when we put it to practice. When it's time to put in practice the difference between man's reality and God's reality, most of us, all of us, will respond based upon what we have heard the most. So even though we know there's a difference between facts and truth, we will respond based on what we have heard the most. So if you hear more about your facts, and your facts are louder than the truth that you know, that's where your faith will be. And if your faith is there, then your facts will remain and you will not see a change. Oh, I hope you hear me. But if you hear truth more, if you allow truth to reverberate in your ear and it's louder than the facts that you see, now you're working your faith. So I've got to set it up so that I hear truth more than I hear facts. You ever wonder why the disciples were able to do miracles at their time and it seems like Christians aren't really doing much? It's because of how we hear. Luke chapter 21 says that Jesus was in the synagogue teaching daily. Every day he was there teaching and the disciples were right there with him. I doubt that he was preaching 25 minutes. I doubt it. But that's what we do in this service. We have 25 minutes for us to hear a word from the Lord. Just 25 minutes, and that's only once a week. And if you miss a couple of weeks, mm. That's all I can say. Mm. That's all I can say. 
<laughs> because it means that's where your faith is. So when things start falling apart, you can't do anything because you don't have any faith. You're in a deficit. It's like, it's like saying you fill up your gas tank every week to full. And on the week that you didn't fill it up, you're on E, but you drive and saying, well, I filled it up last week, so it should run. No, every week you got to fill up the tank, right? If it's on E, it doesn't matter how many times it was on full and past, you've got to fill up the tank. And so it is with your faith. No matter what's going on in life, your faith must come. It must rise. It must increase hearing it over and over. Point number three, there's power in hearing. There's power in hearing God's word. Every time you hear God's word, you are hearing, fill in your note sheet, the Logos word. The Logos word is the total inspired word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, that is considered the Logos word. Jesus, or the Bible says in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. That is the Logos Word. The Scripture tells us in Timothy that the Word is inspired of God, useful for doctrine, for reproof, useful for correction and instruction in righteousness, that we would all be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's the Logos word, Genesis through Revelation. Jesus said in John 6, 63, that he speaks a word that is spirit and his word is life. That's the Logos word. And as a Christian, you can either ignore it, neglect it, and kind of push it off to the side, or you can decide to lean into the Logos word. In other words, you can decide to work the word in your life by taking it in every day. You're listening to it when you put on your car, turn on your car. You're listening to it when you get ready to go to sleep. You always got the word playing in your hearing. Always got the word resounding within. Even if you're sleeping, you've got the word flowing. It's when you read your Bible, rather than reading silently, it's choosing to read it aloud because it is the Logos word. And when you read it, you're hearing it. You're hearing it over and over again. Faith is coming and it's coming and it's coming. And when you can do the Logos word, hear the Logos word, then there's power in it, enough to produce in your life. Not because you can figure it out, but because the word has the power in and of itself. The Bible says in Mark chapter 4, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. What is he saying? Remember, we're just talking about one aspect of the process. So through the weeks, we're going to get into what is the seed. But suffice to say to now that the seed is the word of God. And as you're hearing the word of God, you're in a position to scatter your seed. And when you scatter your seed, you don't have to do anything. You, there's no willpower involved. There's no effort. The Bible says it's not by might, not by your power, but it's by his spirit. You just keep going to bed at night and getting up. Keep on hearing his word over and over again. And the Bible says that it will sprout and grow of its own. First the blade, then the head, then the full corn in the head. That means that's the change that you've been believing God for. That is the Logos word. Genesis to Revelation. You listen to it over and over again, and you're working your faith. Then there's what's called rhema word. Rhema word is the scripture that the Holy Spirit pulls out of the Logos word so you are enlightened, so you are inspired. It's like a revelation where you get greater comprehension, where you have a greater understanding. It's revealed for your direction in that moment. It's revealed for your personal application. 
Peter had a rhema word. He was working out this idea of ministering to the Gentiles when he himself knew he was called to the Jews, and he had a rhema word. The Bible says in Acts 11, then, then I remembered, I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. It was a rhema word that enabled Peter to go out and do the work of ministry. The rhema word is when a specific word from God comes, it speaks to you so that you can hear and receive like no other time. So you might have been reading one scripture over and over again, but a rhema word comes and you got a revelation. It comes alive within you. It's the power that's needed for the change. I got a logos word, Genesis, through Revelation, but when I read my Bible, there's something that pops up from the page that is the rhema word. I remember when I read John 17, 17. I read it just like anyone else. It was a logos word until I saw Psalm 91 that said, thy truth, thy truth is my shield and my buckler. Truth, so I went back to John 17, 7. He said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So y thy word, your word is my shield and my, it was a rhema word. Psalm 146 became a rhema word because he said uh, he is near to those who call upon him, to those who call upon him in truth. It changed my prayer life immediately. I don't have to ramble and figure out what to say. I just need to say what he said in his word concerning my life. I hear myself. It was a rhema word I got when, when I started reading my Bible aloud. I used to read it to myself, but the rhema word said faith comes by hearing. So I need to hear myself reading this word and faith starts to rise within me. By the rhema word, I understood that his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish everything that he sent it out to do and achieve the purpose wherein he sent it. It is a rhema word and I began to apply it in my life, the logos and the rhema. It became an anchor for my faith so I could hear it over and over again when I would talk to people, it would just rise up in me. That's the rhema word. I'd hear myself saying it. It made me strong and so that I could be just like those in the hall of faith, having miracle after miracle after miracle. Why? Because faith really does work. And if it works for me, it can work for you too. If we will work our faith, faith, will work for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed.